It took a while, but we finally got a rainy day in Santa Monica, California, and I wanted to spend it on the Trek Super Commuter Plus 7. I've already reviewed the Super Commuter Plus 8S. This bike is, is awesome. It's super fast. It's got a carbon fiber fork. It's got a through axle on the front. This one has the Bosch speed motor versus the standard performance line cruise. Okay, so 20 mile per hour top speed. That's one of the biggest trade-offs between these two. And I found that it's actually slightly lighter. Uh, instead of 11 speeds, this one has 10. We've got a Shimano Dior 11 to 42 tooth cassette. It does have Shadow Plus, which is sort of like tucked under there. It's a little bit more out of the way. They've got this awesome alloy like derailleur guard. It keeps it from getting bumped if you're leaning this against a wall or if the bike tips or whatever. I think that's so cool and I only see that on Trek. And then there's also this one-way clutch so you can click it in the up position. Uh, originally, I saw these on mountain bikes and stuff because it keeps the chain a little bit tighter. It's not gonna bounce around as much. Even if it did, you've got a double-sided slap guard here. Really, really nice setup. Uh, but then when you want to service the wheel, you can put that in the down position. Or if you want to make shifting a little bit easier, if you're just, you're on city streets and maybe you're not going as fast. Remember, this is a class one, whereas that's a class three. 28 mile per hour top speed on that. Uh, but the price difference is, is quite high. $1,400 less for the plus seven. So, I mean, is it worth it? It's like, well, you got one fewer gears, but the spread is still the same on the cassette. You've got the same sort of like pedal cadence, except we have a 17 tooth uh, chain ring up front here, okay, versus 20 on that one. So the 20, a little bit larger, it slows your cadence down, it helps you to hit and maintain those higher top speeds. Another big difference is that this one has the Supernova M99 Pure Headlight. This thing is, is a beast, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the, turn the bike on, and then I think, yeah, it just comes right to life. Look at that. And it's got like a sensor, so, you know, yeah, see how it just changed? It's just blinding. This is like a thousand lumens versus the smaller, this is the Mini 2. Go ahead and turn this bike on. Trek has enabled the lights on both by default. See, it's, it's a lot smaller, but it's still 205 lumens. It's very bright, and I love where they've mounted it. Up high, so you're gonna be a little bit more visible and have just a, a better time spotting the road with these lights. A lot of times I'll see lights down here on the uh, suspension arch, or in this case, this is a carbon fiber fork like I talked about. So one of the trade-offs with these bikes is, I mean, they're stiff, they're stable. You get great power transfer when you're pedaling, but comfort is compromised a little bit. It's, it's more active bike, and this is a 110 millimeter stem, so it's really angled out, and it's actually, it's angled down a little bit. I think this is seven degrees, and it's, it's you could flip it. You could angle it up to raise the bars a little bit, and we got the ergonomic grips, and you know, the, the bone trogger, like, you know, in-house saddle, 31.6 millimeter, seat post that's that's one area where you could you could go a little bit more comfortable if you want the tires are another area where you know you're getting a lot of comfort um you're going with the schwabi supermotor x these are 27.5 by 2.4 2.4 that's pretty fat i mean you'll you know you look at these things it, it it definitely offers comfort especially if you lower the psi the range is 30 to 55 but if you weigh more you, you don't want to go too low so you can get some pinch flats and your efficiency drops significantly as well but i think that's kind of cool because i'm a relatively lightweight rider at 135 pounds so I'm, I'm usually like lowering the pressure a little bit and getting the getting the comfort they track really nicely there's a lot of stability here this bike weighs almost 52 pounds it's like 51.7 pounds Whereas when I was weighing the AS, this weighed like 52.4 pounds. So, you know, there's not a huge difference. Some of that might come from the light, again, from the, you know, extra sprocket in the rear back there. And then the, the derailleur is a little bit nicer. This is X, SLX versus Dior. So it goes Dior, SLX, XT. Um, it also has the, the one-way clutch and everything, the slap guard. These only come in these two colors right now. It's 2018, so we got this gloss red. If you want the sports car look, you're gonna have to go with that one versus the satin black. Really beautiful, and this helps to hide a lot of the cables. They're internally routed through the frame, and they've got these bigger uh, holes, so they might be a bit easier to service. Trek has a whole bunch of dealers you know, all over the country, and I'm actually at Helen Cycles right now. It's a pretty cool shop in Santa Monica. They've been around since like 1936, really old company, and they have six outlets. So this was the headquarters. I always think it's fun to go on an adventure and you know get to check out all their bikes. They have just a, a ton of bikes um, and some nice spots to ride. You see the bike lane here with the green 
it's it's really you know it's set up pretty well for for commuting and stuff so coming back to the bike this thing comes in five different sizes so you can really dial and fit and that's important if you're you're riding a little bit faster even with the 20 mile per hour version here you're probably going to ride further this does have a power pack 500 so it's a really high capacity battery pack uh, the bosch performance line cruise motor is super efficient um, and i just love the way that this drivetrain is set up you can see they've got the miranda like alloy guard here and it's extra tall see how low the chain is compared to that that chain ring guard and that helps your pant leg to slough over and not get gunked up and you know not interfere with the the drivetrain and then trek has this nice aluminum alloy shield going on down here it just adds a little bit of extra protection from rock strikes or curb strikes these tubular alloy fenders they're like 70 millimeters wide they're custom they're designed to really protect you well from that extra wide surface area of of the tire so we're going to check that out i'll put a camera on the on the frame when we go into the water a little flick bell right here and i was talking about lights earlier we also have a supernova three led in the rear pretty pretty bright and then this rack this is a really minimalist rack you could probably do some paneers hanging off of this there's a little notch here too to maybe help your paneers from sliding forward and back as you ride and then a little loop down here for a lot of paneers have like a bungee system or like a little um, some sort of like plastic lever. It's just a sweet setup. The wheels are, are pretty secure on this thing too. So up front we have a 15 millimeter through axle, 100 millimeter hub spacing, and then it's got a bolt system. There's no quick release. And this is a six millimeter, uh, like a hex wrench Allen key. And you can also see the disc brake rotor down here, 180 millimeters Shimano. These are dual piston calipers, three finger Shimano hydraulic disc brake levers. You can adjust them, bring them in a little bit. So if you're someone getting a small size frame and you're wearing gloves maybe or whatever, you don't wanna have to you know, struggle reaching out far. You can, you can bring them in a little bit, which is, which is really nice. I mean, hydraulic disc brakes are the way to go with, with a sportier, higher end bike. They're just, they work better. And the rear brake, you think about that cable going all the way back here. We used to have mechanical disc brakes and the cable was rubbing the whole way through that whole tube. Um, hydraulic, they, they both feel equal, like the left and the right another 100 mil 180 millimeter rotor in the rear. Nice kickstand, not adjustable, um, but you know, it, it gets the job done and maybe it stays a little quieter. And then the rear hub. Okay, so I'm back here. You can see there's also not a quick release on the rear hub. It's just got a five millimeter hex wrench. So six millimeters in the front, five in the rear. And this is, it looked like 135 millimeter hub spacing, pretty standard stuff. And then the rims, check these out, black. They don't have machine sidewalls, so it's black all the way to the rubber on the tire, black spokes, black hubs, just really clean sealed bearings, sealed bearings in the headset too. So, you know, on a rainy day, it's not gonna get water in there and start to squeak or rust. Pretty much everything on this bike is aluminum, including this derailleur guard, including the pedals. I don't love these pedals. These are the Welgo M21, they're cage style. They can get bent in and just, they just don't offer you very much surface area. I'd probably replace those with like some magnesium Welgos and get them online pretty affordably. Uh, so coming back to the rims, notice that they've got these little reinforcement eyelets. So that means when you're adjusting them, you're not gonna scratch up the rim. Also, it probably provides a little bit more strength for this bike. And I would say for high speed operation, right? But again, the, the seven is, is sort of the lower speed, but I, I think it still has up to 300 pound maximum weight capacity, which is pretty phenomenal. You know, so Trek is, they're doing a good job with their bikes. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's interesting to compare these two back to back. And when you really dig into it, they look the same at first glance, but notice the two finger levers on this one. I reviewed the 2017 model. So, you know, there might be some other changes. Both models have two sets of bottle cage bosses. So you could put like a folding lock up here or a mini pump and then a bottle cage down here. It's just a really, really nice setup. Again, I would be going straight for the suspension seat post because I'm a little bit more sensitive that way. The carbon fiber forks are gonna be relatively lightweight and Trek has this like special carbon fiber that they developed that's like extra dense and they don't export it from the United States. It's like, you know, all, all their stuff is really high end. And then the grips here, you see the B, that's the bone trogger kind of in-house branding. So a lot of the parts they're making themselves and they're able to hit those relatively lower price points. So this is $3,599. So $3,600 versus we come back over here, you know, we're looking at the $4,999. So $5,000, that's the $1,400 price difference that I'm talking about. But both of them have, you know, Bosch drive systems, really 
reliable. They've got an excellent reputation, two-year comprehensive warranty on those, um, and the service centers all over. So again, like Trek dealers can help you with this. You could take it even if you move, go to different states. Speaking of moving, if you ship this bike from one country to another, a lot of times you can't fly with the battery packs, but the Power Pack 500, you know, they've been around for a long time. Even the 400 will fit. It's the same dimensions. So it's really neat that you could travel with this bike, with your bike, and then you could borrow or rent a, a battery on location. I love that. And just the way that Trek has integrated it here, you see how that down tube, it, it bulges out a little bit, but especially with the black, the battery really, it just fades into the frame. And then you're actually getting a lighter weight pack. This is 5.8 pounds versus six pounds on the power tube, which is the new fully integrated Bosch battery. And a lot of times, you know, you end up with like a really thick tube the whole way, just a heavier bike in general. I, I like this sort of stepped in design uh, because of the utility and the weight savings. So let's go ahead and get that, that battery off the bike. Got the keys right here, Abus locking core. Go ahead and just insert this and then turn it. There we go, and it pops right up and it springs back. So that's kind of nice. You can take the battery out and lift it up. Be very careful, you know, always lift with, with that plastic loop right there. And we can see that this is a 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour. So roughly 500 watt hours, as I was saying, about 5.8 pounds. There's the proprietary plug on the base. This is what it looks like inside. Got all those wires, pretty easy to access if you're a shop. Just set this thing back in and then, okay, you wanna push down and make sure you hear it click. There we go, that's how you know it's seated correctly. And then down here, there's this little battery door for the charger. I, I love this thing, like there's no leash or anything. You don't have to worry about losing a rubber part and it, and it seats pretty securely. You hear that? Yeah, I, I like this. I think they've done a really good job just with the battery integration, with the charging port, you know, even the keyhole up here. But do be careful because if you're charging and you move those pedals, that, that little door, your, your plug would be right there. Um, next to the crank arms. So one of the other differences between these two models, again, the 8S or the 7, is that you get a kind of a slower charger. It's a little bit compact is what Bosch calls it. It weighs a little bit less, 1.3 pounds versus 1.7. Um, there's the proprietary like Bosch plug design. If you have another electric bike with the 4 amp charger, you can use it. They're, they're interchangeable, just like the batteries. Um, but th that's what they're doing to save weight, to save cost probably, to kind of hit that lower price point. Just wanna call that out. It, it means you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for this, this bike to charge. Uh, maybe like six, six and a half hours versus five, five and a half. That would be my guess. And then coming back down to the drive system itself, you know, this motor is measuring three signals. There's a magnet here, passes by a little sensor. Pedal cadence is being detected. So that's like how quickly you're spinning and then pedal torque, so how hard you're pushing. It's measuring all three of those signals over a thousand times per second. It's amazing and it's very, very, it's, it's great. In addition to that, you get shift detection. So as you're shifting through the gears, uh, the Bosch motor controller is measuring like the steady pressure of pedaling and then it can differentiate that from the actual shifting pressure changing with the derailleur. And it, it eases back, it tries to kind of go gentle at those moments so that the chain the sprockets, the derailleur don't take extra abuse. And I just think that's phenomenal. And because this is a performance line motor, it offers up to 120 RPM support. So when I say RPM, I mean pedal strokes per minute. So pedaling at 120, that's, that's fast, but it's kind of nice because there are times where, you know, maybe you're going from flat to up a hill and then down and you don't want to worry about shifting gears. You just, you're pedaling a little faster to make it work and the Bosch motor will support you. you. You don't have to shift gears to go faster. You just pedal faster. I just, again, it's for someone who's, you know, I cycle a little bit more. I've been working in this space for a while. And it's those little things that you start to notice. That's part of why you're paying more. And you know, one of the benefits that you get with Bosch. And again, I just love how tight and clean this integration is because the motor with the, with the black and then the metal skid plate and stuff, it just blends into the, fl the frame very nicely. Um, and, and not all of them do. Some of them have these big plastic, you know, bubble box kind of things going on. I think that's about it. You know, we've, we've gone pretty, pretty deep on some of this stuff. I'm gonna spin the bike around, let you see the other side. So again, there's the kickstand integration and it looks like we've got uh, floating hangers so they can space this out correctly or if there's damage, a nice, nicer rear dropout. 
There's the door for the charging port that we were talking about before. Really nice, not gonna lose that. There's the keyhole. And then the hydroform tubing, just really nice, clean, it slopes down, everything's integrated. Um, one area that I would still be careful about is, is visibility. So, you know, if I turn the bike back on, got this nice backlit display here. We got the headlight, but you can't really see it from the side, right? Just from sort of the front. And the rear light, a little bit more, but they do sell like reflective stickers that you can put on the rims or on the, you know, the frame and stuff just to help you, you know, increase that visual footprint. Um, Trek has the sort of like ABCs, always be seen or whatever uh, safety stuff going on, but these, these tires don't have reflective. I think the Trek logo is reflective and maybe this, this little dash over here, but just keep that in mind. I'm always wearing my helmet, got a backpack on with a light on it. Or if you, maybe if you had a trunk bag, you could set it on this, but it's not really, it's more designed for paneers. So look for some paneers with, uh, you know, reflective fabric or something built in. So coming back to the display, it's uh, the Bosch Purion. It's pretty good display. I mean, it's compact, keeps the cockpit clean. It makes room for that headlight, but it's not quite as feature rich as the Bosch Intuvia, which is like a larger display panel that would sit in the middle. And that one's removable. It has a functioning micro USB port. This one has the port built in, but it's not functional for anything other than like firmware updates. So that's kind of lame. I feel like Bosch could update that. And Trek has disabled walk mode on all their e-bikes. So, you know, I'm pressing that button, nothing happens. I think they just want to be really clear that like this is a class one electric bike. You know, other Bosch powered bikes do have walk mode. So I feel like maybe it's overkill. And sometimes, you know, we're looking at a 52 pound bike. If you get a flat tire or you're in sand or grass or something, it's, it's nice to get some help. It's not a feature I use a lot, but I wanna, I wanna highlight that that's something Trek purposely disables. So there's the power button on top, plus and minus. And you have to remember like a couple different, like, I don't know, steps. The lights on these are always enabled as well. You can't, you can't turn it off. And that's sort of a speed pedal like thing in Europe. I understand when it's a high speed bike, but I was kind of surprised with a class one electric bike here that it's, you can't turn the lights off. Um, so we got speed at the top. If you want to change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, you hold minus and tap power. Okay, switch through. And if you hold minus for a couple seconds, it switches the readouts. So right now we're in assist level. If I hold minus, we go to trip distance, hold minus, total distance, hold minus, range. And range is dynamic. So as I arrow up to turbo, it says, well, we think you can go 30 miles. That's pretty good. You know, with the highest power rating there, all the way down to eco, 85 miles. So, you know, it depends on how fast you're riding. Even if it's like wet streets, there's maybe a little bit more drag friction happening there how heavy you are, but the system measures the last mile worth of riding and how full the battery is. And it sort of dynamically estimates and it does a really good job. So this is a very capable bike in terms of distance. A second ago, we were at, um, let's see the trip distance. If you want to clear that, I think you hold plus and minus and it says reset. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you have to remember like a couple little things about the display, but once you do, it works pretty well and it gets the job done. So enough talking, right? Maybe it's time to get out there. I think the rain's even let up a little bit. Let's hop on these bikes and, and take a little tour. Okay guys, here we go. You know what I like? We're in turbo mode here. We're probably gonna max out to 20 miles per hour pretty quickly. And we do have that awesome bike lane. Okay, we got the wet. Very nice. It's working great. Hope everyone's okay. I think we're near the hospital, so occasionally there's like an ambulance passing by. There's the no hands, right? It's pretty stable. And then I would try to do shift detection. It's a little bit noisy around here. <laughs> and we're past 20 miles per hour there so the motor kind of cuts out um you know one of the trade-offs with the performance line motors is that they use that smaller 17 tooth sprocket in this case 20 tooth on the uh, high speed bike 
the 8S. And the smaller sprocket is, um, you know, there's a reduction gear in there. So it spins two and a half revolutions for every crank arm revolution. And what that means is there's a little bit of friction happening. So if you're riding the bike unassisted, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't really notice it very much, but you know, trying to be fair, there are other mid-drive systems that just have a standard size chain ring and there's no friction there. So this one's very responsive. It gives you good chain retention, um, probably even like a little bit of mechanical advantage for the motor, but there's that, that little bit of friction when the bike's off or when you exceed 20 miles per hour. So there, there's kind of like a wall. When you, when you go above 20, not only are you dealing with the extra weight of the bike, but you're also dealing with, you know, the motor's not helping you anymore, maybe some wind resistance. So it, it definitely feels like a 20 and you can, you're like, oh boy, like, wow, the bike was really helping me a lot. And again, that motor, it's rated up to 63 Newton meters of torque, which is quite a bit. Um, there's quite a bit of range depending on, you know, whatever assist level you've chosen. And by the way, these, these bikes are, they're very water resistant. You don't want to submerge the motor or anything, but you know, when you're riding, if you're getting it rained on a little bit, or if you, you hose it down gently, you don't want to spray it, no power washing, but it's going to be, it's going to be fine, you know? And, and again, being able to take the battery in with you to charge maybe at an office or maybe just keep it inside. Extreme heat, extreme cold can be tough on these lithium ion batteries. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking about how to manage this bike. And you, again, you're taking off almost six pounds of weight and that makes the bike a little bit lighter to lift up, put it on a car rack, a bus rack, something like that. And the fenders have been really quiet too. Just pulled over for a second here and you can see the water beating up. Definitely loving that light, especially in the rain. Bike's still performing really well. The disc brakes are stopping quickly. Okay guys, we're in the highest level of assist, a relatively low gear, so I'm gonna spin up quickly, go off the curb over here, just listen for the chain. Love that slap guard, just extra long. Look for the sprockets, spinning quickly, the shift detection, all that stuff. Let's do it. just pedaled up to 23 miles per hour, no problem. So again, you work harder above 20, of course, but you know, it's, it's definitely possible even with the reduction gearing and stuff, it works pretty well. Okay guys, this is the fender view. So you should be able to see water and how it's dispersed up into my, my feet and everything. I'm gonna ride through some puddles for you. definitely getting my feet wet especially if they're in the down position you'll notice that I had them kind of up high but you also don't want to hit the fender on your shoe when you're turning so you gotta keep all that in mind these are again extra wide they're solid not hearing a lot of vibration they match they're pretty great and the tubular construction means that they're they're a little bit more rigid than just flat aluminum Okay guys, I managed to find us a volunteer. This is Brady. He's been working here for a couple years, it sounds like, right? About two years. About two years. You know a lot about the e-bike stuff. You've been following along, especially the mountain bikes. It's a big trend in the industry and it's just something we gotta 
got to take part in if we want to exceed as a business out here. Yeah, definitely. He's he's towing the corporate line here. I, I love it, but but after work it looks like you're getting getting gnarly, man. <laughs> yeah, I spend most of my time in the dirt. Most of my most of my free time in the dirt. Yeah. Well, um, th thank you for getting wet today. You know, going out here. We we're not gonna go too far, but you know, it's fun to see people like on the bike, right? Usually it's just me filming the bike. Um, and I gotta say, I love your helmet. Like it's totally gonna stand out. You got safety going on. Why don't you just take off and uh, I'll chase you for a second here. There we go, we got the headlight. That thing is intense. Bring it on, Brady. You see the kickstand bounce just a little bit. It's taking off. <laughs> Thanks, man. Even from back here, you can see the little LED, you know, shining bright. Does a pretty good job. And from way down here, yeah, look at, that's the headlight. It's a 205 lumens. That's a great job. Just be extra careful when it's wet, you know, for sliding and stuff. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> There we go, there's the staff. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> How wet are you, man? You stay pretty dry down here? Like, the fender's working out? Relatively dry. <laughs> Relatively dry. For the conditions. Sweet, thanks again, man. I really appreciate your help. Yeah, no worries. Well, guys, pretty wet, but we had a good time. I hope this fills you in on all the details for the Trek Super Commuter Plus 7. For the full written review on this, including standover height and some of the other measurements and stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. I have also reviewed the Super Commuter Plus 8S, uh, but it was 2017, so you can compare the two back to back. I welcome your feedback and input, particularly on the forums. Of course, have fun out there and ride safe.